Looking at being able to use um, the information that we know about trig functions, the key features, and our graphics calculator, we should be able to solve quite a variety of problems. Um, so in this case, the height of a ball bouncing on a spring can be modeled in time by the equation h is equal to 6 sin bracket 2 pi over 7 times t, where h is the height and t is the time in seconds. So, I guess I really haven't given this units, but let's call this centimeters. We'll call that height centimeters as well. So the first question, what is the amplitude of the ball's bounce? Well, remember that amplitude is always only from the midline to the top, or from the midline to the bottom. And if you notice there, there's no plus term at the back, so it hasn't been shifted up and down any, and you can also look to see that zero, the axes, the x-axis there, is actually quite symmetrical about top and bottom there, so that is the midline that's splitting in half. So our amplitude is literally going from the midline up to the top, and we can see that on the graph is actually a 6, and you can also see that from the equation that you see a 6 there as well. So the amplitude of the ball's bounce is 6 centimeters. How long does it take the ball to go from the peak down to the bottom and return to the peak again. So here we're looking at trying to figure some information out. We want to figure out how long it takes to go from the peak down to the bottom and back up to the peak again. What's the time it takes to do that? So you might be thinking that you can read that straight off the straight off the graph, but actually here um, you'll notice it's not lining up perfectly and so we do have to do a little bit of calculations to figure this out. One thing that should hopefully be ringing in your head as well is that, isn't that one complete period? It is. That is a complete period there as well. So, we're looking for the time to complete one full period. Now there's a few ways to go about solving this problem. One of the first things that we can do is actually just look for another period that maybe we can actually read off completely. Because going from one part on the graph to the identical part in the next part of the cycle and the identical part in the next part of the cycle, that is still one complete period there. So any time period or any chunk of time that you're looking at going from part of the cycle back to it again is going to be equal to one period. And if we look here, this is a sin graph, starting at zero, going up and down and back through again, that one actually overlaps perfectly and we can read that. We can see that that's seven seconds. So we should be able to say that the period here is equal to 7 seconds. If we weren't sure though, another way to go about doing this would be um, to actually solve for the values of t when h is equal to 6, and we can do that in g-solve. And another option for you to think about would be, for those of you who've looked about how to write the equation of the formula, you know that b, that middle term in with the t, is equal to 2 pi divided by the period. And if you look up here, you see that's 2 pi divided by 7, so that 7 should be the period there. You could also use it as a formula to work it out. No matter how you get there, as long as you've got period equals 7, you're okay. So looking at the next question, from the equilibrium, how many seconds does it take the ball to reach a height of 4 centimeters? Well, where's the 4 centimeter mark here? Four centimeters is here. From equilibrium, how many seconds does it take the ball to reach a height of four? So we want to know how long does it take to get from here up to the four. And you'll notice that's not exactly on the grid line. So we do need to um, look at that really carefully and use our calculator probably to figure it out. I'm just going to try to refresh that. There we go. So getting to the four seconds, how or the four centimeters, how long does it take us to get there? So the height of four centimeters. I know now that h is equal to 4, and I'm looking for seconds, which is time. And like all the problems we've done before, we're going to do some substitution, and then use our calculator to show it out. So I know that h is equal to 4, so I'm going to say 4 is equal to 6 sin bracket 2 pi over 7t bracket, and this is what I'm actually solving. So first thing I'm showing is my substitution. Next thing I can do is come in and solve this inside a solver, or I can use my graph as well. So I might just use the graph here, so I can get it plotted as well. 6 times sin bracket 2 
pi divided by 7 times x. Remember, we're not going to use the letter T, we're just going to use that, let that button right under the red one. And that should give me my equation. Draw it out. Ooh, I do have something weird going on in there, don't I? So, let's go in and correct here. That should be a pi. Shift, pi. There we go. Draw it out. Might just zoom out a tiny bit so we can see more. And so conveniently I can see pretty much everything I need to see there. So I want to know when h is equal to 4, what is t? So h is actually my y-axis there. That's my vertical one. So I'm going to use g-solve. And I know what y is, but I'm looking for x. So I'm going to use xcalc, and I have a y value of 4. Now, keep in mind with trigonometry, these sin graphs and cosine graphs repeat over and over and over again. So you're going to have more than one solution at a height of 4, because the ball goes to the height of 4 many, many times as it goes along. So we want to arrow through. And I'm just going over to this one because I noticed that my y-axis is there, so I'm going to use this one here. That way I don't have to do any subtraction. So the value of t for that very first spot, this one here, when h is equal to 4, t is equal to 0 0.813 seconds. Okay. Last question. At 12 seconds, so I know that t is equal to 12, what will be the height of the ball? So I'm looking along to 12 seconds, I can come down here and see, oh, it's close to 6, but it's not exactly there. So h is what I'm looking for. Like we've done before, we'll show our substitution. h is equal to 6 sin 2 pi over 7. This time I know that t is 12, so I'm going to plug that in. And I can use g-solve again, since I'm right here, or you can put that straight into your calculator um, in just the normal menu, normal run option, but we'll just use this since we're here. I'm looking for y, because I know what x is, 12. And you can see here that it's negative 5.89, or negative 5.84. So negative 5.85. So I might just check for myself if this makes sense, and it does if I look at 12. I'm going down, so it's going to be a negative number, and I'm awfully close to 6, so negative 5.85 is probably a good answer for me. Okay, so don't be afraid to use your g-solve. It's pretty powerful for helping you figure these things out. Remember that there can be more than one solution if you're going along in this direction, and uh, don't forget your units as well, like centimeters and seconds.